kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. <laughs> it almost seems like a dream as I think back to one of the most memorable hunts I've ever been on. It was many years ago, and as I think back, I wonder if the memories of what happened on this trip could have changed. I struggled to find the right words to describe my thoughts on this hunt because there were so many little things and big things that all together added up to be one of those trips that I will always cherish. Located just outside of Healy, Alaska, which is about halfway between Anchorage and Fairbanks, we're at an elevation of about 6,000 feet. This trip was my first Alaskan experience, and it was one that made an indelible mark within me. And after spending time in this rugged, remote country, I came away from Alaska a changed man. That's what's so hard to explain to those who have never experienced a profound connection we as hunters have with the hunt. Something happens that makes us mature during an extreme adventure like this, as this kind of adventure deepens our connection with nature. When you're in a special place like Alaska, you realize how small and how significant each of us really are in the grand scheme of things. Got it. Guys, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. I'm so cool. And Nick, I got a hundred thanks. This is great. Golly, I gotta savor the moment, baby. Just as this country had a deep impact upon me, so did my outfitter. You see, my outfitter for this hunt is what I call a man's man. And I put him in a category that I don't put many people in. I don't know how you can be so cool. <laughs> You're just supernatural, buddy. His name is Brent Keith, and he owns and operates a full service outfitting business called Castle Rock Outfitters. Brent is the one guy that if and when the proverbial you-know-what hits the fan, Brent is the guy that you want on your side. Brent is tough, smart, and as experienced of a mountain man as I've ever known. A little walk is gonna be a butt kicker, but we're gonna make a walk and see what we can do. Yeah, that's the moose hunting ninja right there. His knowledge of the land and experience hunting this huge mountain range have made him one of Alaska's most respected and best producing big game outfitters of all time. But of all the qualities that I see in Brent, I must admit that the thing that really seals the deal for me is the fact that he is more like a coach than anything else. What I mean by that is he pushes you to the limit because no matter how much you think you're in shape for this kind of hunt, you'll need someone to push you to the next level. I should have started working out for this hunt when I graduated from high school. 
sometimes coaches have to be stern and demanding, and we have to dig deep to make things happen. These mountains are huge. <laughs> On a hunt like this, you'll have to dig deep to get up the mountain. I have a saying, it's the most fun you'll ever have being miserable. <laughs> I still got one toe that's good. One out of five. I love doing this, and honestly, I can't get enough of it. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Armasite, the titanium vacuum sealer, supercharged scent killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%, BSA Optics, Gamo Adult Precision Air Rifles, Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, and Grave Digger Broadheads. The High Road will be right back. As my first hunt in Alaska was over, I made a vow that I would return someday. And when I came back to Alaska, I wouldn't do it without going with my friend and outfitter, Brent Keith. Not only is Brent one of Alaska's most respected big game hunting outfitters, he's also known for his incredible success when it comes to trapping. During the dead of winter is when Brent is out running his trap line for predators. And it's also one of the things he specializes in as he offers this kind of trapping adventure for clients that want to experience Alaska in the dead of winter. His trap line is long and literally you'll participate in something that most folks could only imagine. This is one of my cubby sets that I've used in the past when the population of lynx is up pretty high. I'll use this for for getting them to uh, some links and then Wolverine as well. This one's ready. The traps that Brent uses uh, catch all different kinds of animals and uh, he's primarily going after lynx, wolf, and, uh, and fox. And here's a set right here with a nice lynx in it, with a nice mature animal. During a week-long trapping trip, those that go will gain a new respect for the Alaskan wilderness as you'll have an adventure of a lifetime and take away some unbelievable animals. Is this the way you normally find them? Yeah, a lot of times they'll They'll tear it up a little more, but you can see his good quick kill. He hit it pretty hard and sucked it up real tight, and uh, that was it. It just, just kills perfect. them like that? Yeah, just that snare sucks right down tight, and, and within two minutes, they're well, done. Well, he hadn't been dead long. I mean, he's still kind of soft, but look at it. Look at the size of his melon, Tony. My friend Tony joined me on this hunt. I met Tony years ago when he came on a hunt that we had promoted on television. Since then, Tony has joined me on many hunts, and we've become good friends. Well, I nailed him. Great shot, Tony. Well, it's our first day out here in Alaska with Brent, and uh, we've set some traps and snares and stuff on the way in, and couldn't ask for better weather. It's cold, round zero, sun shining, no wind, absolutely gorgeous. We're going up and down over these ridges and came over top of one of these ridges and Brent threw up the stop sign and spotted this little silver fox about 250 yards away. And, and fortunately, he stayed there long enough for us to make a little run on him. And here he is. We sure didn't expect to see this rascal, but Hey, that's what it is. You, you never know what you're going to find up here. Being in Alaska during the 
dead of winter separates the men from the boys, and it also makes the people that you share this kind of experience with even closer. My respect for Brent was about as high as I could have ever imagined after my sheep hunt. But after spending a week with him on his trap line, my respect for him grew even more. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Reconics, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feed, Burt Coyote's Luminoc, Shadow Hunter Blinds, Elevators, Diamond Down Thermal Gear, Ion Cameras, and Tannerite. The High Road will be right back. Tannerite brand binary exploding rifle targets presents viewer feedback. Here's a really good one. Uh, it's uh, from Susan. She's from Canton, Ohio. She says, what's the deal with you trying to endorse and sell bombs on your show? That Tannerite stuff just can't be safe. What's the deal? Uh, Susan, first off, that Tannerite stuff is about as safe uh, as you could ever get. It's not a bomb. It's an exploding target. It is absolutely safe as can be. And I can understand how you would be misinformed and you would think that it's not safe because it goes boom. But you know what? The gun goes boom, too. And, uh, and a gun is safe. And in the right hands, everything is safe. You know, the Tannerite is a fun deal. It's, a, it's, a, it's an exploding target that we wind up using to uh, well, not just to tell wind direction where we're shooting way out there and to help us get uh, a better confidence in our shooting ability, but it's also an opportunity for us to get more new shooters involved because when new shooters wind up hitting that Tannerite, it explodes. It's self-gratification. It makes them feel real good instantly, and Tannerite is a great product. It's extremely safe, and Susan, uh, one thing you ought to do is go online, go to their website, and check it out, and you'll find out that you're wrong about Tannerite. Brent is the owner of Castle Rock Outfitters, and he's best known for his incredible success moose hunting. September is a time when weather begins to cool and the leaves start turning color, and it's when moose hunts are conducted. It's also the time of year that moose are in the rut. On my last moose hunt with Brent, Tony joined me on that hunt as well. Each of us flew into camp in a small bush plane, unloaded gear, and then we used horses to get us around. The camp was nice and comfortable with roomy wall tents. Brent's moose hunts are two weeks long, and during that time, you'd better get ready to spoil your eyes. The country is giant and it's beautiful and you'll be thankful you've got a good horse to ride. Jeez, you can see so much country up here, it's amazing. How far is you up there, Brent? It's 318, Tony. It's a lot closer, my phone. It's a lot closer. First moose hunt up here with Brent Keith in Alaska, and we've uh, been looking for sheep all day long. Spotted a few, didn't see nothing that was legal. So we were on the way back down the river, and 
looked up and spotted this moose and decided we'd just uh, make a run at him. He's kind of unique looking, so I didn't really care if he was a monster because he was unique. I want something different. And uh, made about a 300 yard shot and here he lays. Well, this is what he looks like, folks. It's been a long time since I was on a moose hunt up in Alaska. I mean, it's many, many, many years. And I met Brent Keith years ago when he took me on a sheep hunt. I said, if I ever got, come back to Alaska and go for a moose, I'm gonna go with Brent, no doubt about it. Take a look at this guy. I mean, we were covered up in bulls the whole trip, but I mean, he's got points. He's perfect. He's absolutely perfect. I don't know how wide he is or how many points he's got. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. A nine by 12, that's pretty doggone good. I'll tell you what, the, the, the cool thing about this hunt is, is that I really and truly, I was willing to go home empty handed because this is just, I mean, it's just unbelievable being in this country. I mean, I'm, I'm just, words can't describe it. You know, there's, there's one problem with coming to Alaska folks, and I don't care if you come up hunting with Brent Keith or you come with anybody, there's one problem with coming to Alaska you'll come back, it's that good. The High Road with Keith Warren is presented by Walls Outdoor Goods, Liberty Safe, Oil Field Camo, Savage Arms, OpticsPlanet.com, Darton Archery, Vortex Range Finders, Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, 99%. Castle Rock Outfitters, Gerber, and Wild Bucks Outdoors. Most of the animals that I hunt have a great sense of smell and because of that, I've been using a product now for over 10 years that's helped reduce my human odor and it's consistently helped me put more animals on the ground. Whether you're hunting for moose like we are on today's show or whitetails on your own farm, if you want to take advantage of one of the best tools to help reduce human odor and help you be more successful in your hunt, I highly recommend that you do all that you can to reduce human odor. One thing I can say is that confidence is the key to everything and when I go to the field I want to be confident that I have reduced my human odor as much as possible. Hunting in Alaska is an incredible experience, and after spending as much time as I have in this special place, I have an old saying. It's actually a warning that I have for hunters. If you've never experienced hunting in Alaska, be warned that if you do, you can't do it only one time. You'll be hooked, and you'll go back. You have to. At least I do. Doing is going to walk up here to about a 500 foot cut bank, and we can see a huge expanse of ground out there. We're going to be looking for something, see what we can see. To me, it's like being in one of the most remote and pure places on the planet. And how can you just leave and not want more? I know I can't. It's for that reason that I'm heading back to Brent's camp this fall on a mixed bag hunt. We'll be going after grizzly bear, sheep, and moose. We offer sheep hunts and, uh, and that's what we were having to do today. And as we were on our way up the river here, we turned around and looked back and, uh, and happened upon this nice, beautiful moose. And, and uh, Tony just happens to be up here on a combo hunt and it worked out just fine. Uh, this bull moose fell right in our lap. It was perfect. And I'm going to name this one the Rainbow Ram. And, and we know why, because that rainbow back there. But folks, take a look at this. This is a beautiful animal. If you've got any questions, call me about Brent. Call me. I'll tell you something, you're not going to find any better of a guy. <laughs> <laughs> We 
we got all the meat out of here a couple of days ago and now it's time to get these antlers out so we'll load them up and pack them out back to camp. Alaska has left an incredible mark on me. If I didn't admit that it's one of my favorite places on earth, I'd be shortchanging myself. Yes, it's rich with wildlife and exciting adventure. Each of us choose where we hunt, what we hunt, and how we hunt. And it's those choices that make hunt so special to us. What motivates the hunters that I know is the entire hunting process from the little things that all too often get overlooked to obviously the bigger things. All these things combined make each hunt unique in its own way, and we call that process the joy of the hunt. Eye on Camera is the official sport camera used to film the high road.